Welcome back friends, thanks for joining. Today Randall here with Cooking Under Pressure, a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you how to use your pressure cooker. We got all the tips and tricks, but some awesome recipes. Today, we're taking you overseas. A lot of us can't travel right now, but we're going international. One of my favorite recipes. I hope you have a pressure cooker. If you don't, go get an Instant Pot, whatever you need, because we have Pad Thai today. Yes, you can make pad thai in the pressure cooker. It is quick, it's tasty, it's awesome. I can't wait to share this recipe with you. If you get a chance, please subscribe below and also click on the notification bell. We will get you all of the updated videos. Now let's do this right now with this awesome pad thai recipe. Welcome back guys pad thai today. It has chicken in it. It has shrimp in it. This is an awesome dish. I am really excited to share this with you. We already have our sesame oil heating up. So let's get this recipe started. It's super quick, super fast. This is kind of Thailand's fast food. You can get this at some of the fast food vendors on the streets. It's an awesome dish. So let's start. We put in some sesame oil and right away I am going to put in our chicken so we've got this already heating up so we're gonna put the chicken in with I put in about two tablespoons of sesame oil and we're just going to quickly brown this chicken I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper on top as always you know I like my little pepper grinder no other spices other than pepper and my favorite Himalayan salt, but we are using a lot of sauces today. This is a very saucy dish. If you like Thai food, you know when you go to a Thai restaurant, you always judge a Thai restaurant by their Pad Thai, and this is a unique, tasty Pad Thai dish. While we're browning this up, you may notice a new background here. Uh, while I was working from home, I got ambitious. You never know what you can find online, YouTube. How about redoing the backsplash? Go look at some of the older videos. You'll see completely redid the kitchen. I did the backsplash myself. It actually turned out pretty well with some white glass subway tiles. They sometimes look blue, they sometimes look green. They sometimes look gray, but it makes the kitchen look a lot cleaner, neater, and we've gotten rid of some of the clutter. So yeah, we've got a new little cooking space today. So we've got our chicken. We're just going to start to brown that up. And while we're browning that up, we're going to throw in some ground ginger and garlic it's about maybe one tablespoon of ginger and three cloves of garlic smells so good right now and we're also going to put in half of a yellow onion now this isn't a super traditional pad thai recipe. Some people don't like onions in their pad thai. I love it, so we're doing onions. That's just yellow onions. We're just gonna mix that up. Smells so good with that sesame oil. We're gonna put in red peppers, bell peppers, just one red bell pepper. I sliced it kind of the long way. We're gonna put in some shredded carrots. And last but not least, I come from New England, we call them scallions, some people call them green onions. More the white part towards the bottom, about four stalks of scallions. We're gonna save the real green parts for a garnish at the end. As far as the carrots, uh, I did two small carrots and we're just gonna mix that up. Just get all of those veggies mixed up together. And most of it is pretty browned. At this point, 
I'm just going to push it to the side and I have two eggs already beaten. We're just going to pour that in and put those two eggs and they'll cook up pretty quickly here on the side and you can see how that works like a scrambled egg. We like to have the eggs in here. We're also going to be adding shrimp and tofu at the end of this recipe. We're not going to put in tofu now or the shrimp now because it would overcook and the tofu tends to get really mushy. So we're going to cube that, put that in at the end and it really uh, adds a nice texture as well as flavor to this pad thai dish. So you can see I've pushed these ingredients off to the side and just take about a minute. It's just like any typical scrambled egg that you make. Now remember, this is on saute, so we'll keep this on saute while we're doing this. And it's almost done. Doesn't take very long. In the meantime, I like my pad thai a little bit on the spicy side. So as you know, I love this garlic, this chili garlic sauce, maybe a tablespoon, um, but it is just enough to add a really nice bite to this. You don't have to add any additional spices to this if you don't want to, but you start mixing that up. Now the egg is already cooked. Start really mixing that in together. And I bought this pad thai sauce and this we're going to put in about a quarter of a cup so i don't even need to use a spoon because a quarter of a cup is about half of this jar uh, you can buy this most of your grocery stores it's just called pad thai sauce there's lots of different uh, brands of this uh, it what it is is it's mainly sugar and tamarind um, it's hard to find regular tamarind unless you go to an Asian store. Uh, tamarind is a fruit that's kind of really sour. Um, I think of tamarind as just a soury type fruit, um, but it has a sour and a sweet flavor, this, uh, this type of pad thai sauce. And if you know pad thai pretty well, you know the, the, the really the balance of the sweet and the sour. So kind of a combination if you think about it like brown sugar and um, white vinegar is kind of that tamarind type flavor but this is a nice little substitute I think it only cost me two bucks I got it at an Asian store here locally but just look for a pad thai sauce or look online and you should be able to find one pretty easily now I love fish sauce you guys know that and don't be afraid of it. Put in about close to a tablespoon. That was about a tablespoon. You know me and my measuring. I don't do a great job, but that was pretty close to a tablespoon. It's going to have that little salty flavor, but there's nothing better than fish sauce, and it really works well in this recipe. A lot of people don't agree with putting soy in this. I like a little bit of soy just for that little salt bite, just to balance out. So I put in maybe a teaspoon, a little bit more than a teaspoon, not much more than that, a little bit less than a tablespoon, and just mix that in. You don't have to add the soy sauce, but I prefer it. And you just mix that in. The chicken is almost pretty much cooked. This is gonna be a really quick dish. So I've added all the ingredients except for this, these last two. Now this is one that people, if you're a traditionalist, I've got, I don't even know if I've opened this yet. Oh uh, yeah, I've got cr the creamy whipped Peter Pan peanut butter. I love one good scoop of this whipped creamy, no, sorry about that noise, uh, of creamy whipped peanut butter in my pad thai. Again, this is one of those things where people will say, oh, you added peanut butter to your pad thai. Trust me, folks, this will be some of the best pad thai that you've ever had. 
So you can see, oh, look at how great that looks. Look at the colors all coming together. This honestly is one of my favorite, favorite dishes. And last but not least, with the liquid portion, I, I would recommend water if you don't have, you know my Trader Joe's favorite, the miso ginger stock, if you can find it. Uh, on the shelves right now, it's very difficult to get. We, we're lucky to have a Trader Joe's right down the street. This is a cup and a half, and there is nothing better than this miso ginger stock. So I add this a quarter, a cup and a half of that stock, and last but not least, our rice noodles. You can buy the rice noodles at your local grocery store. I went to the Asian store uh, yesterday, so I was able to get the Pad Thai sauce as well as uh, these rice noodles. And you just push them in there. I've only, they usually sell them in a package, uh, a 16 ounce pack, package. We're only doing uh, eight ounces for this. So just kind of stuff them in there and just kind of pack those in. You've got everything you need. We are not gonna cook this for very long, folks. It's only gonna be uh, up, it's gonna take probably about five minutes to get up to pressure, but the cook time, four minutes. After we go with four minutes, we're gonna put some shrimp, we're gonna put some tofu in, we're gonna finish this up, we're gonna let it sit a few minutes, and you're gonna have some of the best pad thai that you've ever had. Next up, of course, our cocktail of the day. All right, we are getting up to pressure. We're almost there. It smells so good in there. We've got our cocktail of the day, Funky Buddha Floridian. If it's a Hefeweizen, a German wheat beer. It's so refreshing in Florida this time of year. Uh, wheat beer, Hefeweizen is perfect. This is a South Florida uh, craft beer company, Funky Buddha, perfect for Thailand. I've been able to spend a couple of months there. Saw some really cool... Uh, Buddhist temples, a little nugget of knowledge. Buddha, a person who is awake. We have Funky Buddha Floridian. Let's pour this. A real tasty Hefeweizen. We are in the dog days of summer here in Florida. So we have a really nice, crisp, clean Hefeweizen. Let's try this out. Uh, this company puts out IPAs, it puts out fruity beers, fun beers, unique beers. I think they have a maple bacon coffee porter, Funky Buddha, a perfect beer to pair with today's Pad Thai. Enjoy today's cocktail of the day. So the pressure time was only about six or seven minutes and the cook time four minutes, so a little bit over 10 minutes. At this point, we do a quick release so we just did a quick release and I stress as always being safe so we released the pressure and we're going to open up this with the towel of course to be safe and look at those noodles you can see they have already cooked perfectly now some people like the noodles super long I take the trick of getting some nice shears and I just cut it right down the middle. At this point what we're going to do is you can see this just look at how gorgeous this turned out. The noodles are tender. I'm going to mix that up a little bit and this looks like you're just getting ready to eat pad thai at a, a Thai restaurant. So what we like to do at this point, is I add some bean sprouts. So add the bean sprouts and just mix those in. See that it doesn't stick on the bottom and the noodles are already perfectly cooked. So you can mix that in nicely. And I add I love tofu in my pad thai, so we're just going to put that tofu in and gently fold the tofu in. Obviously, the reason why we do that at the end is because if it cooks, 
with it in there, it gets really mushy, unfortunately, for some people that cook it with it, they find out that their pad thai becomes very mushy. But you can see that pad thai has perfect little cubes of tofu in it. And make sure if you can, get the extra firm tofu. This is firm, I couldn't find extra firm. They didn't have it at the store, but this will work as well. So you just kind of blend that in a little bit. And last but not least, I've already pre-cooked a little bit of shrimp, probably about, I don't know, 12 shrimp here. Just add those in on the top. And at this point, what we'll do is we'll grab the lid and with the tofu and the bean sprouts, as well as the shrimp, we're just gonna leave that on warm and let it sit for approximately about five minutes five to 10 minutes if you like, 10 minutes is probably the max, but those flavors will marry, they'll meld together, the tofu will soften just a little bit, and then we'll add these garnishes, the best pad thai in a pressure cooker, Instapot, that you've ever had. We've let it sit for about 10 minutes on warm, and remember to always still use your towel, and all of those flavors have come together, married. You got the shrimp on top. So we're gonna scoop in. Let's dig in and get some of this beautiful pad thai. Ah, oh, look at that. You can take, you can get takeout from your favorite Thai restaurant and you can make this scoop in a couple of these these have warmed up a little bit we'll put a couple of shrimp on top we've got some green onions throw that or scallions gotta have cilantro cilantro is always a winner in every dish throw that on top some crushed peanuts, very authentic for a traditional pad thai dish. And I like to add a squirt of lime right there. Let's give this a taste. Now, if we did the timing, we're talking about the pressure time was about six or seven minutes. The cook time was four or so 11 minutes. We did not quite 10 minutes, it was eight to 10 minutes. So a little over 20 minutes and you have chicken and shrimp pad thai, like you just ordered it from your favorite takeout place. That is perfect. Nice bite, spice, sweet with the sour, with the tamarind flavors. We have the chili paste in there the creamy peanut butter. This is a perfect pad thai dish. If you like this video, hit like. If you like my new backsplash, hit like as well. Any comments would be great. We hope to see you in our next video. Our next video will be video number 20. Thanks for joining us. And as always, if you ain't cooking under pressure, you ain't cooking. We'll see you next time.